Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave, and I started this series on ETFs that pay us every single month because people love that, right? You know, it's like a paycheck. You get it every single month. So the first time we did straight stock ETFs that pay us every single month. Now we're going to jump over to bond ETFs. Now, typically, I'm not going to be talking too much about bond ETFs, but it might be an exciting time to start looking at these, and I'll explain why. If that is what you're looking for, please stick around. Twenty twenty two was a bad year for bond ETFs, and it's pretty simple to understand why. The Fed was rapidly raising the interest rates, and when that happens, newly issued bonds are going to pay more, and old bonds don't look so attractive and go down in value. Now, the opposite is also true. If interest rates are being uh, reduced, then newly issued bonds are going to pay less, and those old bonds look pretty attractive, and they're going to be going up in value. So, as long as we understand that, well, maybe we can use that to our advantage. So. Now might be a decent time to start dollar cost averaging into something like a bond ETF over the next 12, 24 to 36 months. Now, it looks like we're going higher for longer, so who knows when we're gonna top out? Nobody really knows. But if we start buying into a position like this, it could turn out pretty good for us in the long run. So the Fed is out there raising interest rates and trying to tame inflation. Eventually, if they're successful, inflation starts to fall. At that point, they hope that they can reduce interest rates as well. Why? So they can stimulate the economy. Businesses out there want to borrow money from the banks, and they certainly don't want to do it at seven and a quarter percent like we're at right now if we can get a lower rate. So as rates come back down, then again, that stimulates the economy, makes people such as myself that has a manufacturing business want to go out and buy a new piece of equipment or add a warehouse or do these types of things, again, that gets the economy going. So eventually, we should see some lower rates in the future. So again, if we can use dollar cost averaging to our advantage, buying into bond ETFs and things like this, eventually, these should go up in value as interest rates come back down. And a quick little story just to illustrate this point is uh, back in 2018, when the Fed funds rate was slowly rising, it hit about two to two and a half percent, I decided I wanted to buy muni bonds. So I started loading up. I bought about $600,000 worth of muni bonds. I liked that tax-free income and it worked out pretty well. Uh, my timing was lucky. But uh, the bonds that I bought come 2020 when rates were reduced back down to about zero, the value of those bonds went from 600000 to about $660,000 overall. So I made about 10% on the appreciating value of those bonds from those interest rates dropping. And then I also collected all those coupon payments along the way. So it turned into be a decent investment. And I guess that's what I'm kind of thinking. Can we have that same kind of scenario? I don't think it'll be anywhere near as dramatic as a pitfall as you see in that graph there. But uh, I think we could play out over a long period of time and have a decent return with something, you know, like a bond ETF. Now, a couple other items before we jump in and review some of these different bond ETFs is one, if you haven't bought your I bonds yet, go check out, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to buy I bonds because you might find that your first $10,000 should go there along with your spouse's $10,000. You can invest quite a bit into I bonds and right now they're paying 6.89%. So that's a pretty darn good investment and you could go look at that. And uh, second, T-bills. When I go buy T-bills, I like, I prefer to just go buy the T-bill myself. You can buy it on the secondary market or new issue. And those are pretty easy to do once you understand. So I'll probably do a video um, on how to do that on Fidelity. It's uh, pretty simple, but today I bought one, 5.2% uh, over a six month period, just locking up some money, putting it in there that I'm not gonna be using for anything else. So not a bad way to go about it. Still, you know, for somebody that wants to get into buying bonds, the reason that I come back to a bond ETF is because if you have five bucks and you wanna go buy a bond ETF, when you use your M1 account or something like that, you can do that. So it makes it very easy. So with all that said, let's jump in and take a look at a few different bond ETF products. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna work through a few different products really quickly. There's lots of bond ETFs out there to explore. So I'm gonna point out a few that I like, and then we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison with those and some other ones as well, knowing that 2022 was horrendous and we're not gonna see great returns based off of 2022. But if we're preparing for 2023 and beyond, maybe not a bad time to look at these. So. First one I'm gonna start with here is BND, that's the Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF. And when they say total bond market, that's what, exactly what they mean. I'm gonna run down here to the bottom and just point out number of holdings, 17,444. So everything is in this. And uh, expense ratio is extremely low. This is a very popular fund. Dividend frequency every single month, yielding 2.71%. And as you can see, $87 billion assets under management. So a very big fund. 
If I just click on holdings really quick, you're going to see government, cor corporate, securitized, municipal, uh, and some cash there and some other as well. So uh, they have everything in BND. So that's a great place to start if you want to keep it really simple and just buy BND. The next one I have on here is TLT. And I did a review of this one not too long ago, just a really quick review that time also. And I'll link that up above if you want to take a look at this. But uh, TLT is the iShares 20 plus year treasury bond ETF. Again, so we're very conservative, just like uh, BND, because it's so broad. TLT 20 plus year treasury bond is going to be very conservative, yielding 2.75%. Again, low expense ratio, 0.15%. A lot of these you'll find around 0.4%. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.35 in there. So that's that's pretty low for what you get here. Uh, again, another decent size uh, option. And everything in here is going to be government bonds, 99.4%, of course, because it is the treasury bond ETF. Next up, VTEB. This is the Vanguard Municipal Bonds Fund. So you can't go municipal, bond, <laughs> municipal bonds, excuse me, just like I was talking about. I want the tax exempt bond ETF. Now this will be federally tax exempt. Uh, state, I'd have to see uh, how that breaks down when it comes to uh, a municipal bond fund. Uh, but again, very low expense ratio, monthly payment, lower yield, but without Fed tax, might be pretty attractive to certain people, especially if you are a high income earner and you're in a high tax bracket or you know that kind of thing. So 2.26% and again, 25 billion. So another uh, good size uh, bond ETF. And finally, the one I've got here is SPHY. So this is if you want to go into high yield. If you're looking for a high yield bond ETF, this is the one I like, SPHY from Spider. Again, expense ratio is low for what you're getting here. It pays every single month and the yields all the way up to 6.6%. But of course, you're taking on additional risk. You're taking on that, you're getting that extra three plus percent yield because you're taking on that additional risk. But uh, smaller compared to the others, but still decent size. Pays everything a month, low expense ratio, like I said. And if you look at the holdings here real quick, you're going to see some of the corporations you've probably heard of. And uh, you can kind of you know, glance down through here. But even though it's uh, high yield, at least they're pretty darn diverse, right? You can see the har largest holding here is 0.34%. And they've got 1,942 different holdings. And finally, this is a side-by-side -side comparison of some of the ones that we just talked about along with a few others that I picked out so you can kind of see how they stack up. But I did this on my recent video that I just talked about that uh, compared monthly paying stock ETFs to just straight stocks. Now we're talking about bond ETFs. So I'll link that one up above. And again, the idea here is to build out a monthly paying portfolio just to see, you know, are there products out there like that that you could utilize? So ticker symbol, what category do they fall into? And then you can see the expense ratio and how it changes from product to product. So as you go up in risk, you get more. So low risk, high risk, right? As you go up, high yield munis, and uh, one we even call junk here. You can always say, hey, look, I just bought some junk today. Uh, and this is the five year price return. So you can see that they've all had a, a negative price return over the last five years. But if you look at the charts, you're gonna see all of that primarily occurred in 2022 as those rates were going higher and higher. But they have had a positive five-year return when you factor back in all the yield that you've been receiving. You can see what that looks like side by side. So are you willing to take on additional risk for that higher yield? Or do you want to say down here uh, with a little bit more stability? Now annually, that's what, what the, this is what they would pay out if you invested $100,000. And monthly, that would break down to this. So just trying to give you an idea of how this would all stack up so you can start doing your own research and decide which one is best for you. So bond ETFs, typically not something that I'm really attracted to, but uh, as bond yields are rising, it is something that I feel like I can use to my advantage. I think the Fed is going to come to my rescue, and at some point, they're going to be able to squash inflation, drive that inflation down, and hopefully interest rates will start to fall along the way. And if I have a position built up in something like a bond ETF, I might have a nice little payoff. So that's my goal here, and that's one of the reasons I'm considering adding some of these positions in my own portfolio. If nothing else, like buying those uh, I bonds and those T bills and building up that position. So if you have any questions on any of this, please ask down below. I really appreciate you watching. Have a great night. Take care. Whoop.